Oh, howdy all. Grab yourselves a beer. It's time for some Path of Exile discussion. Today, I wanted to go through the bosses of the Val Temple map. Uh, the hardest individual map on the Atlas. This is the one that's isolated, so it's not connected to anything else, which means under normal circumstances it cannot drop. The way that you get this map is by corrupting tier 15 maps. This can either be a natural tier 15 map, the time I'm making this, which is during the Blight League, that could include a colonnade, or it can be a tier 10 map that's shaped, so a shaped dunes at the time I'm recording this, could be another map that could corrupt into Val Temple. Getting a map to corrupt up into VT is pretty rare, it's about a 1 in 16 chance, but if you corrupt all of your tier 15s, uh, you will get plenty of Val Temples over a league, and especially if you're in a trade league, a lot of players flat out can't beat this map, and additionally the, the layout is absolutely terrible, and so a lot of players choose to skip it. So, in terms of the rewards that you can get from this map, uh, the key one that drops, there's two divination cards that are high value. There is a Beauty Through Death divination card, which is a set of five to get the upgrade prophecy for Atsuri's Reflection. Uh, so that's one sh uh, that shield is extremely valuable. The cheapest I've ever seen it, I think, in a Mature League is 10 exalts, uh, but often it can be as much as 25 for the shield and the Prophecy is almost all of that value. So for that reason, uh, the Beauty Through Death is a premium divination card. Sometimes it's two exalts, sometimes it's five, varies between. Most commonly it seems to be around four. Now that drops only in the boss encounter, and it's believed to only drop from one of the three bosses. This is a trio fight, so there are three different bosses you've got to fight, and it's believed that it is Kaj Alai that drops the Beauty Through Death card. Additionally, I've personally had the Divination card for the Soul Ripper Unique Flask drop at Vile Temple, and that was actually what got me uh, keen to run a bunch of these in this league. Uh, it dropped in my second Vile Temple of, of the Blight League, and it dropped from an Abyssal Trove. I have no idea whether it can drop normally in Vile Temple just from killing a monster, but I would expect that to be an extremely rare Divination card of the Order 1 every two to 300 maps, uh, because the item that it, that it upgrades into is something that was staggeringly rare during every previous league. So for that reason, I don't expect to see many of them. There's also a lot of other less premium divination cards though that really do add up in here. Uh, you'll be getting the Wretched a lot, you'll be getting Last Hope, the divination card for the Mortal Hope fragment as well. Uh, and in fact, that divination card is solely responsible for how much cheaper Mortal Hope has become in recent leagues. It's always because there are players running Val Temples, buying Val Temples off other players to run them, and then generating Mortal Hopes that way. Anyways, enough talking about the map. Uh, the layout is terrible, as you can see, but let's talk about the boss. This is a three enemy boss, and I'll bring up some statistics from the Path of, uh, from the Path of Exile wiki that will give you a bit of a sense as to their stats. So, we have Kaj Alai. Kaj Alai is an archer character, uh, she is based upon the uh, tentacled miscreations, I think they're called. Uh, the less family friendly name that they tend to be referred by is Titty Bitches. And she is the absolute mongrel of the three bosses. One and a half million health and attacks fast, 1.65 attacks per second. So 600 milliseconds between her attacks roughly. Has a fairly reasonable resistance profile and is resilient against curses without being completely immune to them. When her friends die, she will be regenerated to full health, and in addition to being at full health, she will also gain a new ability. The first new ability she gains is a physical firestorm, and the second, physical, uh, second ability she gains is a nastier version of that. These do a lot of damage, and the critical thing you'll notice here is that the top tier version of this has a duration of 30 seconds. That's right, 30 seconds. This deals a staggering amount of damage. Uh, it one-shots my character in Blight League, and as a result, if the Enraged Firestorm is on the field, I just have to avoid it. And if I stuff up, splat, I'm dead. Fortunately, I'm in soft course, so it doesn't bother me that much. The Firestorm version is nasty, but is survivable. Uh, but just expect that it will absolutely rip you to shreds. Uh, you'll be dropped to very low health, but you can get through it. And again, it hits so frequently. It hits every 90 milliseconds. The big
bigger one, the one that actually does one-shot you, hits every 130 milliseconds. Next up there is Kajkura. Kajkura is the bleed cyclone character. So he starts out with cleave attacks that uh, attack fairly slowly and deal staggering amounts of damage uh, and apply corrupted blood. You want to have absolute immunity to corrupted blood in this fight if you can at all manage it. Uh, if you can't manage it, well, sometimes life sucks, uh, but just expect that you're in real danger if you can't manage immunity to corrupting blood. The reason for that is that actually Kajkura is the easiest of the three bosses. Ideally, if you've got the ability to do so, you're going to want to keep this one alive to last. His, his sort of ultimate ability, which he gains when both of his friends are dead, is Cyclone. It's a very fast Cyclone, where he is moving fast and attacking fast and dealing more damage than players do. Players do half damage with Cyclone. Uh, he does 60% when he gains that ability. So he's pretty mean, but he is the easiest of them. And the reason he's the easiest is that you can outpace him. Whereas Kaj Alai is a lot more nasty because you can't really outpace her because she's an archer. She fires Rain of Arrows and her Firestorm variant, which is a physical spell, uh, deals just horrendous damage. The other thing that's really nasty with Kaj Alai is that because it's a physical spell, uh, it, is, it gets straight through most of your block because it's much easier to stack physical block uh, to stack block from attacks than block from spells, and also gets straight through any of your uh, or any of your elemental mitigations that you that you'll have because it's pretty normal for players to have a lot of elemental resistances. Also, can't dodge it, can't evade it. So don't rely on your raider defenses to get you through there. I know your raider's really tanky against a uh, boss like all, but against Kajalai, your raider will not be. And then there's Kaj Yaraz, which is the third of them, and very similar to Kaj Kura, uh, where Kaj Kura inflicts bleed in, a, in addition with his attacks. Uh, Kaj Yaraz inflicts fire damage instead. You'll notice that in the ultimate in, ultimate version. Gain 75% movement speed and 320% of physical damage as extra fire. Now, Kajya Araz actually casts this enraged skill as, as a buff on himself and then will come around and attack you. Okay, so that's enough uh, discussion of Theorycraft. Let's actually go into the room and demonstrate this fight. Now, part of the fun of this is that, uh, I mean, I'm playing in softcore. I usually can do this without dying, but sometimes mistakes happen. You'll notice that there's a row of corpses on the ground here. That indicates approximately where you will aggravate the bosses if you walk past it. Be very conscious of any sextants that you have that add extra monsters into the boss fight. I flat out do not do the sextant mod that adds bodyguards to the boss fight. And that's because those bodyguards uh, tremendously increase the boss damage on this. So if ever I get that sextant, I just instantly reroll it. Harbingers, on the other hand, are the other thing that's likely to be in the boss fight from a sextant. If you get those, they're cool, at least in my opinion. It does depend on your build. Uh, for me, actually, because I'm playing a Fireball slash Vile Fireball Ignite character that abuses both Ignite Proliferation and a single chain, for that reason, I'm actually very happy to see the boss's, throat, uh, the boss's um, be accompanied by a Harbinger, because I can bounce Fireballs off the Harbinger. I can stay a full screen away from the bosses, and then I can fire, them, fire at them. You'll notice here that the arena is starting to look like a square, and that's what it is. It is a square with these four pillars. These four pillars block line of sight, which can be very useful if you need to get the hell away from certain abilities. All right, at this point, I'm about to just jump in and start the fight. The key trick is don't get hit. Movement is the best defense. And you'll see that I will not allow my Quicksilver Flask or my Cinder Swallow Urn, both of which increase my speed. I'm going to try and keep them active as much as I can. I'm also going to cast my initial spells. Oh, I've just gone closer than I... Th it's actually not quite as far as I thought it was. So I've aggroed them early. And that's a mistake that's, that's cost me 10% XP. Uh, you'll notice there. I think it's useful to see the mistakes. You'll notice how quickly these monsters die. They're very not tanky. This character does not have staggering damage. Uh, I'm doing 385,000 Ignite DPS, and that's on my tooltip, so it's not a huge amount of damage. I'm going to head back in there, and now that I've killed two of them, it would be really useful for me to kill Kaj Alai first, 
but that can often be hard to do, especially when you need to recover control of the fight. You'll notice I've put a town portal out here. This is softcore only, this is very important to do. You do not want to have a town portal inside the arena because you want absolute control over when you restart the fight. Now at this point, uh, you'll notice that there are mini boss, there are trash monsters spawning that look like the boss that is slain, and that's the physical fireball. Oh, sorry, physical firestorm. I've killed Kajalai now, and so there's going to be little versions of her, and now we have the Fire Enrager coming up. He's just trying to cleave me. He's the easiest of the three, and as a result, you do want him to be last. Anyways, hopefully that gives you a sense both of what to do and also of what not to do. Uh, it can be useful to see a player get ganked by bosses because they make a stupid mistake, and everyone does that. Part of the reason that I prefer to play softcore. Uh, the other thing that you want to be conscious of is map mods. I made a whole video talking about the impact of map mods on the Shaper Guardians, and they're pretty similar here. The ones to watch out for, the ones that are terrifying. Increased AoE on bosses makes Kaj a lie much more dangerous than she otherwise would be. Increased speed is a horrible, horrible mod on this fight. Additionally, you may wish to use decoy totems in this fight, and if you do that, then obviously the mod that prevents decoy totems from going off is terrible as well. Likewise, uh, the mod that pre prevents you from slowing the monsters is very nasty if a big part of your movement speed defense, because the biggest defense is being faster than the enemies in this fight, because you just cannot tank these guys properly. And that really goes for anything short of a Nebulok Juggernaut. If you're a Nebulok Juggernaut, then by all means just face tank them. But if you're anything else, then you are going to need to continually move. Continually move so that most of their attacks miss you. And as a result, the ability for you to move faster than the enemy is critical. And these, these speed mods decrease that. So there's both Fleet, which is on this map, and there's also the equivalent version of that that applies only to the map boss, which is actually worse than Fleet. Anyways, if you've got any questions, fire away below. Otherwise, I'm going to leave it there. Hope you have a good one.